full leg day, the three holy grail favorite movements I got, plus upgrades to third street barbell, how to use them. Let's get Jack quads. My staple recently, my leg days now, hypertrophy is my ultimate goal, um, but feeling goal good is number one priority. And with my lower body, I actually just don't even want that much bigger legs. So I kind of treat today as like a maintenance day in terms of trying to get my body to move through ranges of motion. And in my opinion, besides a barbell, this is the absolute best piece, the most natural squatting position. Um, and this is the pendulum squat. So I'm gonna bang some of these out, just sets of five, squat nice and deep, calves to hammies type action, a very basic piece, a nice platform here that's adjustable. The higher up, actually, you tend to get a little bit more flexion going on. It's kind of like a heel, just like a heeled shoe, you can get a little bit deeper. So I keep it around the second notch, um, you load the back, you ain't got to load it up very heavy. My max might be three plates today. Very different than a leg press, which even the weakest bros throwing on eight plates or something. A um, little safety here, you just unscrew it. A lot of great features. The foot pads, grip is amazing. Comfy shoulder pads, um, but you'll see how we use it as I squat. There is a band peg on the back, this safety. If you are training alone, want to get close to failure, just adjust that to a proper height. So this thing bottoms out and you can escape easily through the winged door. There's three exits. Hypertrophy, you're just trying to get some tension and get closer to, to failure. Even seven reps from failure seem to show enough gains and enough stimulus. And then you're collecting volume over time. The volume, which is your sets and reps and weights over time while being close to failure, while targeting and having tension on the muscle you're intending to grow is how you build muscle. But for me, I just get closest to failure to keep some of my strength. I hit full ranges of motion. And again, these quads are already juicy enough. Your boy's just trying to look good in a suit because one day I'm gonna get married. I'm gonna find Mrs. Wright, Miss Wright, Miss Perfect. And, and I wanna look nice in a suit. So we're prepping for that day. It's like Bruno hit the buffet. <laughs> if Bruno Mars got locked in a golden crown. <laughs> you know this. Oh yeah, I know this. It's about P. Diddy. <laughs> hey man. I literally might just kick you out the gym. I know the P. Diddy. The P. Diddy remix is pretty good. I bet you know P. Diddy. Oh yeah. You look like a diddler. You look like a diddler. Bro, that band's called the police. The police. The police. Yeah, that's the name of that band, led by Sting. He stole their shit. He bought the license to it. They created that. They wrote that. Yeah, I know. You don't know shit. Main goal is just to push these knees forward. A lot of knee flexion. The more knee flexion you get, the more quads you got involved. So I'm just pushing those knees towards my heels, keeping my pad against my back and my shoulders. That's simple, folks. Trying not to bounce out of the bottom. I'm real bouncy on my squats. Yeah, man, cracks are natural, dog. He's trying to make an old man joke, and the best thing, like your thumbs don't crack, crack your thumb right now. I can't crack my thumb. That means your thumb's old? I'm gonna crack your skull in a second. Gonna be high, high. Who's singing this, who's singing this, who's singing this? Bro, these are like top, 50 musical people in the history of humankind. Well, they're not my top three, I don't know them. They're your top No, not even mine. Hey, I'm not, I'm not, I'm not, you're just ignorant. Who's this? Elton John. Well, it's not. You don't know who Elton John is. Oh, he's a gay guy that fucking, uh, <laughs> oh, that, uh, that fucking uh, he's a gay guy that uh, Eminem made fun of. Oh, okay. Yeah, 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 yeah. 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 Yeah, yeah, yeah
you a little weight going, a little pushy, just shove that guy forward. Simple. The knee angle, how your shin is in relation to your foot is often gonna be a representation on what muscles are working. So the more knee travel towards your toes, uh, you'll get a little bit more quad involvement. The smaller this angle becomes at the bottom. Um, if your shin's a little bit more vertical, we're gonna get a little bit more glutes and hams, although we're using the entire thing for all kind of compound leg movements. As you start to get more veteran into lifting, you need to warm up a little bit extra. I think it's probably the most underrated skill or thing utilized, so hitting a legitimate assault bike or, or treadmill for 10 to 15 minutes, get a sweat going. It's not gonna tire you out. You know, every other sport has dripping sweat before they even go in the game, NFL, NBA, whatever. The point is to be in good enough shape you can handle that. And I think some tools like this, leg press are a great way too. Kind of warm up your knees, warm up your hips. You don't have to max out and you don't have to get close to failure, right? The goal isn't hypertrophy, the goal would be to warm up. So these are just tools and how your intent and in lifting goes will represent what it's gonna do, right? So, um, like I said, my lower body days, I'm just trying to get my stuff feeling good. I'm just trying to feel good, get a little bit of blood and maintain the muscle I do have on my legs. And so that's how you could train if you're trying to warm up for a heavy squat day. Every day, grab a leg press, get some single leg work, get maybe sets of 10 to 20, super light. You don't want to fatigue yourself to affect your lift, um, but a really great way to warm up your joints. Last but not least, a hip thrust. Um, new equipment here at Third Street. And when you're choosing equipment, kind of bang for your buck is what we think about, right? So when we first open the gym, we a full upper body circuit of hammer strength. Obviously the free weights, the barbells, the dumbbells, you can do full workouts, full exercises to build muscle and strength. I know machines have gotten more popular in the hypertrophy crowd, but there's no legitimate science showing they're actually building more muscle than a properly executed barbell. And that's just fact. The data, the science says so. Um, so we started there. Plus my background being in strength and conditioning and powerlifting made most sense. But as we evolve as a gym uh, and a lifter, Adding these lower body pieces is great. And you decide on the equipment based on what I think free weights lack. And the biggest free weight fault in my eyes is the hip thrust. Setting up the barbell is annoying. The bench is moving, it's annoying. Getting the barbell into place under heavy load is annoying if you're a little bit thicker. This belt, this machine, it is a more basic one. There's tons of different options like this, uh, but I think it's one of the greatest pieces to build your glutes and hams. And again, quad, you can quad mostly on the pendulum, quad or ham, and glutes on the leg press. And this is majority, depending if you're doing it right. Again, keeping that shin straight, as you'll see, I execute it. Um, but that's it. Band pegs, load the weights on the side. Beautifully simple, yet amazing piece. Strap her down. And again, I want my shin bones kind of into my heels. And you're looking at a straight line. I don't want to be back here like this. That's crazy. You know? Put him in one YouTube video, this dude thinks he's the fucking star of the place. He thinks he owns the place. I'm sorry, it's a good song. That's why. He knows this song. So uh, you're down here like this, again, a bunch of flexion here. That means it's gonna put a lot in my quad. So I wanna push through those heels, shins more towards my heels. Put a little tension on it, get them hips up to the sky. You don't wanna over arch here because that's affecting where your ribs go, often affects where your hips go. So I almost prefer to do a slight crunch and keep my midsection very locked in. And the only joint I wanna focus on moving is this hip crease. That's gonna really get your glutes going. A little squeeze at the top, full range. Again, focusing really on just my hips moving. Load it up, get a couple more. So depending on your goals, maybe one thing I would add is a more direct hammy piece. So either a hamstring curl or an RDL is amazing, a slight knee bend. You grab a heavy dumbbell, keep it out in front of you, hips shooting back. A lot of stretch, a lot of tension in that exercise. Honestly, one of the best. That's why we haven't gone in. We do have a leg curl, but I just think an RDL, again, if you do something really good in a certain machine or a certain movement on a barbell, keep it there. And that's it. Basic leg day for me. It's kind of a recoup day, a maintenance day, if you will. Keep my hips, knees, everything feeling good. My muscles feeling good. So I think I'm gonna finish up, maybe ride my bike. Maybe just go for a mile walk every day. So when you're running businesses, 
a lot of different people talk about it. Uh, shout out to Guzman, maybe one of the first to just be so transparent about his finances personally and in the game. It's, you know, it's still, and maybe I'm raised a little more traditional, um, where you just don't ask people that, right? Like you don't ask women their age, you don't ask women their weight, and you don't ask people how much they make for a living. It's just, or how much they're worth or something. It's, it is a little weird. It's a little weird for me too. Um, but we talked about in the other vlog, I'm just gonna be as open as I can here because I think that's what the internet needs and that's what it's lacking. Um, we've gone so far into produced content that people are literally, and they're admitting to it, which blows my mind that they're not the same person on camera that they are off camera. Um, I've always been the same person. I may not always been fully exposed, but I've always acted the same manner both times um, on and off the camera and all my friends can, you know, confirm that and that's why me and Bart and Omar and people like that became close friends off camera because we are the same both and we get along both where other people maybe I've met on camera we didn't get along off camera because they weren't the same person or, or who knows what um, and obviously there's other factors of making friendships but that's a piece and so money is a tough thing to talk about in business in particular because you never want to you know show your cards but basically for a lot of people that don't understand the profitability of a company can be manipulated on what you do on the back end to show different things. Similar to your own income and taxes when you're trying to apply for a loan for a home or get out of debt or something like that, you can kind of skew these numbers. A few things you can't skew, which makes it really hard to run a gym, um, is overhead. Uh, rent costs a lot. If you have manpower, employees, uh, that's overhead. Uh, electricity, music, lights, etc. That's all overhead. So that's a fat chunk of any company you run. Um, and if you live in California, or you live in New York, or you live in these bigger cities, that's going to be a really big chunk and really difficult to do. Uh, this same square footage gym, you know, around 6,000 square foot roughly, in Arkansas, um, might cost me a grand. Uh, here, it's 5, 10, 20 times more expensive. So once you pay out my employees, once I save a little bit of money, once we chuck away at some of our credit, which is another uh, variable businesses and individuals use a lot, debt, um, to either get ahead or um, manipulate what numbers may look like to make a difference. Um, but there's many a month here, and we're very lucky. We've done great. You know, we've been open three years and, and we've never gone uh, into the red. We've been, um, you know, basically breaking even since day one. Um, which is amazing, especially considering our circumstances of opening in COVID, et cetera, et cetera. Um, people working remote and not a lot of people living downtown. So all that is wonderful, but um, profitability is still hard. So I pay the rent, pay my team, make sure everyone's taken care of. Um, then we pay ourselves, um, which we didn't do, you know, for two and a half, almost three years. Um, I didn't take a single penny out of this thing. Uh, neither did Jim McBee. Uh, and so to have the luck, blessing, whatever it might be to upgrade the gym every single year, um, I think is really, really cool. And that's obviously a reason why we want to do this. Like, obviously I want to make my money and uh, that's what the ultimate goal of any business on the planet is. I put part of my life savings into this building. Um, but every single year we've had the capabilities to upgrade uh, big pieces. You know, over the last 12 months now, if you count literally 12 months from now, we've added three combo racks, three or four barbells, specialty barbells, and now a full gym worth of leg machines. I think that's pretty awesome upgrades. Um, for again, when you look at the numbers, a company might only profit the company itself 20 to $500 a month. Um, and for those that don't know, any quality piece of bodybuilding equipment might cost you anywhere from three to $10,000 a piece. Um, depending on where you get it, how good the manufacturing is, shipping, installation, et cetera. Um, so I guess that's just a little look into what we did, but we're running out of square footage. Uh, so that's one limiter. Obviously we can't upgrade forever, but everything, uh, you know, in my opinion as a lifter, and I think that's the benefit is that I've been in the game, I've ran a gym, I've worked in a commercial gym, and I've wanted to build all this for 15 years. I have really good insight on what you need and don't need. Um, and we're open to suggestions, but a lot of times people have suggestions that are on the tip of their mind where my thoughts go deep in foresight. So we have a full bodybuilding upper body uh, gym. We have a full lower body bodybuilding style gym. And then obviously all the strength equipment you could want. So I think we're pretty set for a while, which is great. Um, hopefully the, the members and new members and upcoming members and day passers uh, enjoy the equipment because that is the ultimate goal to get healthy, to have fun doing it. 
Um, and a lot of the new pieces are fun, even for me. So hopefully it's the same for y'all. Appreciate you. Um, and I think that's it for the video. Vlogs are rock back and rolling, man. So welcome in. I'm going to grab a couple cameras. I'm heading to Vegas soon. Um, and I'll probably film that. We still hopefully have the car vlog. We were going to do it a little bit more uh, sooner than we wanted, but it's going to rain. So we're trying to plan working on my car. We'll do that. And maybe a vlog or two in uh, Vegas. I do have a trip to LA also to film. So we'll see what's upcoming. Appreciate you guys, man. Good companies on the way. Rebranding going hard. We'll chat about that in the next vlog. Um, thanks so much, man. We're out of here.